You know, I understand now that, you know, when you inject that Holy Spirit into something, it says that uh, the, the books could surround the world of what Jesus did, you know, and all of those increments of happening in those broken people's lives that night, the acceptance of Jesus' eternal life, their ability to see a future beyond where they were, uh, Welcome to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkis. This is Season 2, Episode 5. You know, you get to trust God so much because your heart can't stand it. You can't take that heartbreak. You can't. There's no way you can. Uh, so what you learn to do, I know I've touched on this before, but I'll never forget this image. Think about 20 degrees, 10 degrees below zero. I won't embellish this story. I have a tendency to do it but I know 10 degrees. Uh, Christmas Eve, a celebration at Neighborhood Church for the homeless. These women, there were buses coming in from, all, from a lot of the big churches. These women became friends of ours that chose to come to this Christmas Eve celebration and knowing, and knowing that after it was over, they couldn't get into the mission that night. They knew that. that <laughs> this is what you do with it. You put it in here and don't think you could bring it up until God says, bring it up. Ah. Uh, they knew the plight of that evening and they were so happy. I will say there was eight or nine women came to that service plus the guys. I remember about nine o'clock, nine thirty at night. It's get it's colder than it can can really be. And as I said before, you want to help. You you, you want a hotel that you own to take those nine little old ladies and take them into the best penthouse room you could find. But what you got to do is drop them off at 9.30 at night. Ah. <sighs> These nine little ladies were sitting in their duffel bags or sleeping bags up against the wall, smiling and laughing. And we're waving to them in our warm van and they're waving to us and we're saying, bye, we love you guys. Talk about horror. You, you talk about desperation. Nothing. Can't do nothing. Everything's full. You've tried everything you can to, to get these women in the warmth of, the, of a building and nothing. So the question is, what do you do with it? Trust God the best way you know how. Lord, please take care of those women. Please, Lord, don't let any crazy guy come into their life tonight. Let them be able to go through this night and get into the mission. And you know, the, the thing, the encouraging part about all of that, the miracle part about all of that, those nine women you see the next Sunday, they're like, how did they do that? And, and what we saw was this love for each other. They loved each other. They were concerned about each other. They take care of each other. 
And that was, I think, the key in all of that. They, you know, the, there's a scripture that says you'll know them by how much they love each other. And that's what I learned uh, that night. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. That, that's the part of this whole working for Jesus thing is like, I, you know, I never knew what that was. Pick up your cross and and follow me. And now I just heard. I now I know that that that's the cross. That is the cross. Unbelievable. Pick up that cross. You're listening to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkis. We'll be right back after these messages. And I had to go find, get back into my cabin. I'd been gone. I had to, I'd been out over to Albany, uh, New York, uh, trading and getting supplies. I was heading back to my cabin and, and I came up the draw and eased up over the edge by the by the rock face and sniffer stiffened. I could feel him bunch up and I knew it was trouble. He was staring into the woods across the flat from behind my cabin and out of the trees came the Indian with six of his warriors. And I looked up and I seen Black Wolf. He was my friend. Owl was with him. Man, what a, what a reunion. I hadn't seen him in over a year. Well, really, that was just a story. I made that up. That's in my book. This one here is uh, the cabin under Flat Arm Point. In 1953, I arranged a ride with my cousin's horse up in the mountains. I found a cabin. I wondered whose it was, what it was. It had almost destroyed. It was almost down to the ground because the wood had rotted. This is the Pony Express. I've been president of the Pony Express, ridden since 2011. What a fun time. We're going to talk about how we publish these books. We're going to talk about do you have a story? Do you want to tell it? What we'll do is we'll talk about these two books, we'll talk about publishing, and we'll talk about your adventures, and hope to see you here at the Family Life Center at First Presbyterian Church on Musser on the 13th of November at 10 o'clock. And hope to see you there. Enjoy, and I'd love to tell you some more stories.
Night Off the Streets provides a place for homeless to sleep out of the cold. We need your help. I had no intention of volunteering. Then I did, because it needed to be done. The miracle is that I have been more blessed than they. Won't you share a little of your time to give someone a warm place to go overnight? Welcome back to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus. I'll never forget that night, uh, that Thanksgiving night, and he played that song, My Chains Are Broken. And a guy came in to sing that song, and he had these chains wrapped around him. And they were real, the real deal chains. And they, as he was singing, they were pieced together so that they could be broken. And it was so dynamic to see that visually plus the song itself. And beyond that, in that community of people that we uh, encountered, and these were all friends. These were people that we developed friendships over uh, a year or two. These weren't, and there were some people that we didn't know, and it was a, a meeting of all of these people. But out of that, there was a guy there that um, he was a landscaper in his life. And through circumstance, he got he was on the streets and never addicted, but he just got on the streets and defeated. And uh, through that whole process of knowing him, uh, this was what transpired. He got enough belief in himself. I've heard this story from another individual. He got enough belief in himself that he thought I could do what I did before. And there was another ministry that was started and we were sort of at the end of that cycle of where we were down at the mission. And there was another mission that came in. And in the process of his recovery, he starts this business again and now it's commercial. And now he's working for the hotels. And he found that guy, the guy that was ministering to him at the time as he's coming out of the ashes. Uh, one day, uh, he said to the guy, he said, I got something for you. He said, what? He said, uh, I'm going to write you a check. He says, Why? He said, I want you to do what you did to me. For me, do it to these people. And the guy looks down, wrote him a check for $15,000. Those are the unseen things that have I have seen. Uh, I've seen a guy that wanted a dollar from me. I think I addressed it before. And you get a little hardened with the street people after a while. And uh, I said, I ain't giving you a buck, man. I'm not. All you guys want is the, in the day, the, a beer was a dollar. All you want to do is take this buck, go get a beer. He said, no, man, there's a bucket plant. I want to go over there and get a job. And I said, uh, no way. And the Holy Spirit said to me, give him a dollar. And I go, no way. You know what they're gonna, he's going to do with the dollar. He said, I need the dollar to get on the bus because it's over there in Henderson and I don't have enough money to get it. But they're hiring. i got to get there. You know, and that Holy Spirit voice, when it gets a little strong, you, you jump. Give them the dollar. You know, I gave him that dollar and... Uh, he gets the job, and it's him and his wife were on the streets, and uh, they had a little boy. With that dollar, God multiplied that dollar into a job. Then he multiplied that job into an apartment. Then they got the apartment, then they got a car, 
And then it multiplied into him being the supervisor in that bucket plant where they make all these buckets for paints. And you see him at Home Depot. That's kind of buckets they made. Ladco was the name of the company. And so from the streets to what God did in his life for one dollar. It was an amazing thing that happened to me to see. You're listening to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus. We'll be right back after these messages. Carson City's Night Off the Streets Homeless Shelter is beginning for 2021. Knotts has been a ministry of many of the local congregations for the past five years. It is our effort to reach the least of these and to provide shelter from the cold. The year before Knotts opened, Carson City had four people freeze to death because they had nowhere to go. Since Knotts has opened, there have been no exposure-related deaths because they had somewhere to go. The shelter begins on November 1st at St. Teresa's Catholic Church. A man and a woman are needed for each shift, for three shifts a night, from 8.30 to 11.30, from 11.30 to 3.30, and from 3.30 to 7 in the morning. Ask anyone who's volunteered in the past. Everything that scared them about getting involved did not happen, and all sorts of blessings they never anticipated were revealed. You don't need any experience in the homeless ministries. All training is provided. Now is the time to begin thinking about volunteering. Here's how you can sign up. Stories. Interviews. Music. News. Mission. Stories. Interviews. Music. News. Mission. Stories, interviews, music, news, mission. Aunt Betty's studio is producing stories, interviews, music, news, and mission messages. It is a new and exciting avenue for opening the gospel to Carson City and beyond. For all creative types, there are opportunities to get their projects out to the world. For all technical types, there are prospects for learning new skills and gear. For students, it solves the logistical issue of how to get community service hours. There is something for everyone. Aunt Betty Studio is a ministry of First Presbyterian Church, Carson City. Stories, interviews, music, news, mission, you get it all from Aunt Betty's studio. Welcome back to I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus. You know, where sin abounds, grace abounds even more, and we've seen grace abound. I've Got a Story to Tell with Dan Skinkus is a Presby Pod production of Aunt Betty's Studios, a ministry of First Presbyterian Church, Carson City. 